I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to continue um, talking about uh, systems of inequalities. Um, and this lecture is basically a continuation of the previous one. I just want to present a little bit more uh, problems and uh, how it can be solved. Um, well, considering this is just like a training session, um, obviously you are encouraged to try to solve these problems just by yourself before listening to this lecture. Um, if you didn't do it yet, just press the pause button uh, on the video and uh, try to do it yourself. And, and then just compare your results with whatever I'm presenting. All right, so let's start. The problem number one is a system of these inequalities. Okay. Let me just repeat something which I, um, I was talking about in the previous lecture. This is about geometric representation of the systems of inequality. The result, the solution of this and any other system um, is presented as, a, as an area on the coordinate plane. So, let's start with coordinate plane. We are talking about Cartesian coordinates, rectangular coordinates. Now, if you see a, a, an inequality like this, what I usually recommend is to start with equation. One, uh, y is equal to x cubed. It's this one. Now, this curve divides the whole plane into two parts. On the curve itself, y is equal to x cubed. Outside of this curve, y is either less or greater than x cubed. And what's important is that one part is completely devoted to one side of the equation, like less than, for instance, and another is completely uh, uh, filled up with points where y is uh, the opposite, whatever. If, if this is less, then this is greater than, than x cubed. Um, I did present the logic behind it. It's very simple, actually. If you allow two points on the same part of the plane to be uh, such that in one point y is, let's say, greater than x cubed and another is less than x cubed, and then we will probably connect them with some uh, curve which is not intersecting this one, because these two points are in the same part. So if this is the place where y is, is greater than x cubed, and this is where y is less than x cubed, since our function is smooth in some sense, um, it should be somewhere the point in between where y is equal to x cubed. And all the y is equal to x cubed supposed to be on this curve, so we cannot really have this point here. So that's why we cannot have two points with different relationship between y and x cubed. Here, y is less than x cubed, and here, y is greater than x cubed. And on the line itself, y is equal to x cubed. Okay, now, why I... Um, decided that this particular part is where y is less than x cubed and not the other way around. Well, the simplest thing is just substitute some point. For instance, the point where x is equal to 0 and y is equal to minus 1. x 0, y is minus 1, so minus 1 is less than 0, which is true. Okay? So that means that this point uh, belongs to the area of y less than x cubed, and therefore the whole area underneath is where y is less than x cubed. Now, in this case, I'm looking for something which is greater or equal than x cubed, so let me just wipe out this piece, and that's where 
and that's where y is greater or equal to x cubed, and that includes the curve itself. Now, the next one, y is less than x4, or equal. Now, x4 goes above x cubed, and this is an even function, because this is uh, an even uh, exponent form. So it's symmetrical. Well, now, we are interested in y less or equal to x4. And obviously, this is the part which is below the curve. It's this one. And finally, x greater or equal than 0, it means it's this part of the plane. So basically what I can do, I can just completely wipe out this piece. And intersection of all these areas is obviously this one. Looks like a horn. So that's the answer, including the border lines, because we always have greater or equal, and including the point 0, 0. That's it for this problem. Next one. Uh, it's a combination of equality and inequality. Here it is. y minus x times y minus x over 2 times y minus 2x times y plus x times y plus x over 2 times y plus 2x times x square plus y square minus 9 equals to 0. That's my first component of the system, and this is an equation. Notice that. That's very important. Two others are inequalities. No, sorry. Greater. And the last one is less than 36. So again, what we need to do is we have to combine, intersect, if you wish, this, this, and this areas. Well, let's start from the beginning, this area. Now, um, I would like to refer you to the lecture on graphs, where I was explaining an interesting manipulation with graphs. If you have a graph of one function, let's talk about f of x, y equals to 0. You have a graph of this equation. And then you have a graph of another equation. Doesn't matter what are these graphs, but these are two equations, and each of them has its own graph. Set of points, x, y, coordinates x, y, which substituted into this, converts it into 0, substituted into function, function g, will convert it into 0. How to produce an equation which has a graph which is a union of these two graphs. Union means put all the points of one and all the points of another together in a, in, in a graph. Well, and I have suggested to use the following function. times g. So, this particular equation, when h is equal to 0, or this is equal to 0, means the following. When is the product of two function, function two, two values actually, when is this equals to 0? 
and this loop went either this one or this one. When this is equal to zero, then the point belongs to this graph. If this is equal to zero, the point belongs to this graph. So since I'm talking about either or, this is a definition of the union of two sets. The union of all the points which transform this into zero unionized with all the points which transform this into zero. So basically, my equation has a graph which is a union of this and this. We will use this feature to decipher our first um, equality. So let's graph it. Now, as I was just saying, the graph of this is a union of graph of this is equal to zero, this equals to zero, this, 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 etc., etc. So each component of this product, when you equate it to zero, will result in certain graph. So the graph of the whole thing is a union of all these. So let's just do it. Graph of y is equal to x. It's this line. Y is equal to x, right? Y is uh, equal to half, uh, x over 2, right? So if this is equal to 0, y minus x over 2 is equal to 0, so y is equal to x minus 2. Uh, that's something like this. Now, y minus 2x is equal to 0. Well, that's this. y plus x is equal to 0, so it's y is equal to minus x. It's this. This y is equal to minus x over 2. And this is y is equal to minus 2x. The last one, x squared plus y squared minus 9 is equal to 0. That's x squared plus y squared is equal to 9, which is 3 squared. So as we know, this is a circle. A circle of the radius 3, because 3 squared would be 9. You remember that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. This is a definition of a circle uh, with radius r around the center of coordinates. All right, let's draw this circle. So this is 3, and I have a circle. So the combination of all these, whatever the number of these lines is, uh, is the graph of the top equation. So all of these together, the union of all these graphs, is the graph of the equation on the top. Now, by the way, these are not really two-dimensional areas. These are lines or curves, right? Now, these are the errors. What is x squared plus y squared greater than or equal to 9? Well, this is the circle where x squared plus y squared is equal to 9. Where is it greater than 9? That's where the uh, distance from the point x and y to a center is greater than 3, right? So it's all these points outside of this circle. So whatever is red, this is area which we are talking about, including, by the way, the circle itself. So the inside we should really wipe out, because it does not correspond to our uh, second component in this system. Okay. How about this one? Well, this one, if you put an equal sign, it's also the equation of 
the circle with the radius 6. So somewhere we have a point 6 and we have another circle. Now this time we are talking about less or equal. Now that means inside of this particular circle. So whatever is outside we should wipe out. It does not belong to our area. So what's left? Well, what's left is something which looks like, I don't know, a wheel in a car. It's two uh, concentric circles. One is radius 3, another is radius 6. And these pieces of radiuses, which are in between these two circles. So that, that's the result, basically. This is... Um, and again, this is not a two-dimensional area. It's just a combination of these lines and these two circles. That's all. And uh, again, as I was saying, it looks like a, a wheel or a tire or something, whatever. OK? That's it with this. So remember that if you have some equation like this one on the top, the best way to graph it, graph it is to graph each individual component equals to zero, graph and then unionize them together. So it looks a little bit complicated, but really it's divided into relatively simple pieces, like lines and circles. No big deal. Next one. x squared plus y squared minus 1. 4 minus x squared minus y squared greater than 0. Okay. Here again, we will use this uh, logic um, when I'm dealing with this product. When the product of two numbers is positive, when either both are positive or both are negative, right? So, let's first draw uh, an area which represent which is represented by this then we will draw an area which is represented by this And then we will unionize them. Because either when this is uh, true, or when this is true, this is true. Correct? So let's just build this, and let, then let's build that, and unionize them. Now, this is basically x squared plus y squared greater than 1, right? And this one is x squared plus y squared uh, less than 4. Now, what is this? If it's greater than 1, it means it's outside of this circle, right? So this circle is x squared plus y squared equals to, to 1. Now, whatever is inside is like 0, 0 when it's less than 1. Whatever is outside, that's when it's greater than 1. So not including the circle itself, because this is a strict greater sign. Now, this one is related to the circle with the radius 4. Uh, sorry, it relates to radius 2. My mistake. 4 is 2 squared, right? So the radius is 2. 
which is this. But in this case, we're talking about less than sign. So points like 0, 0 do belong to it. So everything inside the bigger circle is the area which we are interested in. So finally, their intersection is this ring. So everything inside this ring, outside of a small circle, but inside the, the bigger circle, uh, is the solution to this system of inequalities, not including the boundaries, by the way. Now let's talk about these guys. Again, let's transform it slightly. It's x squared plus y squared less than 1. x squared plus y squared greater than 4. Well, we are talking about the same two uh, uh, circles. But in this case, the first means inside the smaller uh, circle. The second means outside of the bigger circle. And intersection of these things is empty set. There are no points which are simultaneously inside a small circle and outside of the bigger circle. So we are unionizing this ring with an empty set, and the result will be exactly what we are started from, because unionizing means all of these plus uh, all of those. There are no those, so all, only these points remain in the final solution. So that's the solution. Okay. Uh, the last problem which I wanted to present to you today is this. Log base one half of x squared plus y squared less than or equal to minus 2 and log base 2 of the same thing is less than 2. Okay. Um, I had a couple of problems in the previous lecture where logarithms are presented. Um, the uh, typical approach which we can say is the following in this particular case. I would prefer to have the same log here and the same log here. And then by comparing these two functions, the logarithmic functions with the same base, considering the logarithmic function is monotonous, either monotonously increasing or monotonously decreasing, depending on the base, greater than 1 or less than 1. So, based on that, I can actually judge what's the relationship between whatever is under the logarithms. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So, I would like to put it this way. Okay, what should I put here to get minus 2? Well, obviously, log 4 is minus 2, because minus 2 uh, raised to the power of, uh, I mean, 1 half raised to the power of minus 2 would be 1 half minus means negative, it means it will invert, so it will be 2 and then power of 2 will be 4. So that's what it is. Similarly, I will do here. And I will use log base 2, same as this. Now, again, what should I put here to get 2? What is the power I have to raise 2? Uh, I mean, what's the result if I will raise 2 to this power? It would be 4 as well, as well, right? So log 4 base 2 is 2 because 2 to the power of 2 is 4. Log 4 base 1 half is minus 2 because minus 2, because 1 half raised to the power of minus 2 gives 4. Right? So, instead of these two, I will use these two. 
they are absolutely equivalent. But now I can use the properties of the monotonous uh, functions. Now, the log uh, base 1 half has a graph like this, monotonously decreasing. This is log base 1 half. Now, log base 2 has this graph. It's monotonously increasing, which means that in this particular case, the relationship between two uh, arguments which are under the logarithms is opposite to the relationship between logarithms, because this is a decreasing function. So the greater function, uh, the greater function, the smaller argument. The greater argument, the smaller function. So I will re re revert the sign of the inequality to get x squared plus y squared greater or equal to 4 in this case. Now this is monotonously increasing function. So the different, so the relationship between function uh, is the same as the relationship between uh, arguments. So in this case, I have x squared plus y squared less than 4. Hmm. That's interesting. Two seemingly opposite inequalities, right? Well, they are really opposite. But the problem is that there is an equal sign here and equal sign there. So this is greater than equal to 4. And this is less or equal. And this is less than or equal. So there is a commonality. The commonality is equal. So that means that we have to take graph of the function x squared plus y squared is equal to 4, which is a circle of a radius 2, right? So this is uh, y, x squared plus y squared equals to 4. 4 is 2 squared, so that's why the radius is 2. Now, the first inequality gives basically uh, all points outside of this circle, including the border, belong to this area. This is all points inside this circle, including the border, belong to this area. So what's the intersection of these two things? Well, obviously, it's just the circle itself. So this is a set of points which satisfy this system of inequality. Only points which are on the circle itself. They satisfy both, uh, both these equations. Well, that's it for today. Um, I do recommend you to go through the same problems again. They are in notes for this lecture on unizor.com. Um, and, uh, well, good luck. Thank you very much.